Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your patience. We were getting loaded into uh, the computer and Facebook Live today. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Master Sergeant Reese. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. I am Master Sergeant Christy Reese from the Air Force's Personnel Center's Directorate of Personnel Programs. And I am Senior Airman Kanaya Nickens from AFPC's Directorate of Personnel Support. We will serve as your briefers today. We will be covering a lot of information, so we ask that you hold all of your questions until the end of the briefing. Today, we will be covering the overall purpose of the Air Force Enlisted Retraining Program. We will discuss this year's non-commissioned officer retraining program and its three phases. We will cover your roles and responsibilities as the customer. We will then review how to interpret the online MyPERS retraining advisory to include the advisory notes, along with a demonstration of how to navigate through the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory. Today's webcast will lastly cover frequently asked questions. Let's begin. In accordance with Air Force Instruction 362626, the overall objective of the Air Force retraining <coughs> program is a force management program used primarily to balance the enlisted career force across all Air Force specialty codes and ensure sustainability of career fields. It is an opportunity to return disqualified airmen to a productive status. And lastly, it is the opportunity to allow a limited number of airmen to pursue other career paths within the Air Force. Let's now discuss this year's non-commissioned officer retraining program objective. INCORP is designed to optimize the enlisted force structure to best meet current and future Air Force requirements. INCORP is intended for second term and career airmen, but does not apply to airmen currently performing duties in the eight series special duty identifiers and the nine series reporting identifiers. This program consists this fiscal year of three phases. Phase one begins on or about 31 July, 2018. Voluntary applications must be submitted via MyPERS no later than 15 September, 2018. A master vulnerability listing has been produced and distributed to force support squadron commanders and base level assigned career assistant advisors. Be advised the MVL is not in prioritized order. The objective of phase one is to obtain volunteer applicants from identified overage AFSEs, column type objective out on the MyPERS retraining advisory. To fill requirements and shortage AFSEs, column type out object, objective in on the advisory. During phase one, only airmen holding a control AFSE annotated with an out quota may apply for identified AFSEs annotated with in quotas for which they qualify. During this phase, the only in-court retraining application that would be considered are from airmen holding a control AFSE with an out quota. Applications are processed on a first come, first considered basis during this phase. If sufficient applications from qualified airmen are not received and retraining objectives from the, for the fiscal year are not met, phase two will be implemented. If implemented, Phase two will begin on or about 1 October 2018. Airmen in identified AFSCs, overage AFSCs, that have not volunteered by 15 September may be selected for mandatory retraining and assigned a training class seat based on Air Force needs to balance the force. The Total Force Service Center Retraining Office will begin selecting the most qualified in accordance with AFI 362626 in order to meet air staff remaining out objectives. Individual preference is no longer a consideration and Air Force needs take priority. During this phase, volunteer applications will not be accepted. 
a retraining application will be opened for phase two selects via MyPERS. Airmen identified for retraining out will receive a system generated in Corp notification message via MyPERS on or about 1 October. A phase two select roster will be produced and distributed to force support squadron commanders and base level assigned career assistance advisors. Identified airmen will not be authorized to initiate any voluntary actions to make themselves ineligible for retraining during phase two. Phase three will begin on or about 1 November 2018. <coughs> All remaining end quotas will be open to eligible second term or career airmen that were not identified during phase two. If holding a control AFSC not annotated with an out quota, your retraining application must be submitted at the same time as the exception to policy, endorsed by the unit commander requesting release from your control AFSC. <clears throat> Listed here are some of the career fields identified as having out quotas. During phase one, we will be seeking volunteers in these AFSCs to retrain out. As the objective of phase one is to obtain volunteer applicants from overage AFSCs identified on the MyPERS retrain advisory to fill requirements in shortage AFSCs. As a reminder, during phase one, only airmen holding these control AFSCs without quotas may apply to retrain. During phase one, the only in-court retraining applications that we will be considered are from airmen holding a control AFSC with an out quota. Applications are processed on a first come, first considered basis during this phase. We're pausing to allow you to take a look at these quotas. <clears throat> Our team here at the Air Force's Personnel Center are actively updating the new quotas and retraining class seats in system to make available for public view on or about 31 July. Allow us now to cover your roles and responsibilities within this process in three easy steps. The next few slides cover retraining rules of engagement. We ask that you pay close attention. Following these ROEs will greatly aid in the processing of your retraining application, error free. Step one, are you eligible? Prior to submitting a retraining application, you must first determine if you are eligible to retrain at this point in your career. This is a list of factors that are automatic disqualifiers for <coughs> retraining. Input of any of these disqualifying factors automatically render you ineligible to retrain. Please note, even if selected and approved to retrain, input of any of these disqualifying factors before your class start date will result in cancellation. We also use the criteria outlined in Table 4.1 in determining specific eligibility. Step 2. Review the online MyPERS retraining advisory and advisory notes. The retraining advisory is the primary means to advertise retraining requirements by fiscal year. Remember, the advisory advertises two types of requirements, out quotas and in quotas. Use these AFSCs on the advisory and the number of quotas to determine your preferences when applying for retraining. Shown here is how the retraining advisory appears on MyPERS. Here you can see which AFSCs currently have out quotas. Those AFSCs identified as eligible for retraining out represents areas where the current inventory based on skill and grade is healthy enough to take some risk. For example, for this illustration only, if your current control AFSC is 4N011 and you are a tech sergeant select or above, 
Your career field manager is not approving those ranks to retrain out at this time, as there are no out objectives listed. Compare this to the control AFSC 4R011. For this illustration only, you will see that the 4R career field manager is in need for staff sergeant selects through master sergeant to volunteer to retrain out of this career field. Retraining in quotas identify AFSCs where the Air Force has determined shortages may temporarily exist. Customers will use these AFSCs to determine their preferences when applying for retraining. Those AFSCs identified as eligible for retraining in currently have lower inventories where current risk can be reduced by adding additional airmen. Retraining in quotas apply to all ranks listed. For example, in this illustration, if you are an E6 or above and would like to retrain in to 1 Alpha 6, 1 1, you must wait until class seats are available. However, notice for AFSC 1 Alpha 0, 1 1, there are five quotas for staff sergeants, three for tech, and two for eligible master sergeants. Should you meet minimum eligibility requirements for this AFSC, you may apply for them. As a reminder, fiscal year 19 quotas are for class start dates beginning 1 October 2018 through 30 September 2019. The retraining advisory notes are co-located with the retraining advisory and provide specific guidelines and special or unique requirements for each AFSC. Applicants must review the retraining advisory notes for both retraining in and out quotas prior to submitting an application. Applicants must check these notes closely to avoid delays in the application process. When you click on the note number, the definition will appear in the yellow box. For this example, the 1 Charlie 5 X1 career field manager has requested advisory note 155, which reads, retraining out applicants may only retrain into the D shred of 1 Charlie 5 X1. Step three and the last step and final step is to review the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory located also on my purse. Here, you will review AFSC specialty descriptions. This will help you in making your final selection of which AFSC to retrain into. Simply type AFECD in the search area. You will then be directed to the enlisted classification directory link. <clears throat> the enlisted classification directory is posted twice a year, October and April. Ensure you click on the most current directory link. Once you have the directory open, clicking the bookmark option is the best way to navigate through. If quotas exist to retrain into 1 Alpha OX1, here you will click on 1 Alpha to review the entry requirements for this AFSC. The enlisted classification directory provides a specialty summary, duties and responsibilities, and the specialty qualifications expected of each AFSC. In paragraph 3.5 of each AFSC, you will find the mandatory entry requirements. In this example, for entry into the 1 Alpha OX1 career field, you must be medically and physically qualified for in-flight refueling. You must have normal depth perception, eligible for worldwide deployment, and cannot be taller than 77 inches or shorter than 64 inches. For this AFSC, you will need to obtain documentation from your local military treatment facility showing that you are medically and physically qualified to retrain into this AFSC. Now let's check the last of the 1 Alpha 0 X1 mandatory requirements for AFSC entry, 
also located within the enlisted classification directory inside attachment four. Attachment four lists all the minimum requirements for mechanical, administrative, general, or electronic aptitude scores. It also lists strength aptitude codes and your POLKIS, your physical profile listed on your Air Force form 422. In this illustration, here you see the minimum requirement for the general aptitude score is 55. Strength aptitude codes are reflected in column X and identify strength standards required for entry into each AFSC. Here the requirement is code K, defined as retrainee must lift a weight of 70 pounds. Your pull, he pull heats must be a minimum of 111121 and must be accurately reflected on your Air Force Form 422. Now that you have determined your eligibility, you have confirmed that quotas exist, and you have verified that you meet the specialty qualifications listed in the ECD for the AFSC you desire to retrain into, now you may click Apply for Retraining Link. Allow us now to cover some frequently asked questions. Where can I find the NCO retraining program guidelines? When logged into my purse, simply type in NCORP inside the search bar. The updated PSDM is now posted and can be accessed on the Retraining My Purse homepage. What is the NCORP initial eligibility criteria? Second term, a career airman must be eligible for promotion and re-enlistment on your second or subsequent enlistment. Have a current or projected grade of staff sergeant through master sergeant. If already projected for promotion, meaning you have a promotion line number, airman volunteer for AFSCs in your current control AFSC with shortages in your projected grade. Note, Airmen will remain vulnerable for NCORP if projected grade has retraining out requirements in their control AFSC. Airmen in the grade of Staff Sergeant or have a projected grade of Staff Sergeant must have less than 12 years of total active federal military service as of 30 September 2019. Tech Sergeants and Master Sergeants must have less than 16 years of total active federal military service also as of 30 September 2019. You must not be projected for retirement, separation, PCS, or any 365 day deployments. When am I required to obtain retainability for my approved retraining class fee? Once you receive notification of your class start date, within 30 days, you are required to obtain a minimum of 24 months retainability from class graduation date. Please note, some AFSCs awarding courses require additional retainability and will be annotated as such on your retraining RIP and listed within your student reporting instructions. Where can I find my student reporting instructions? All student instructions are located on the Education and Training Course Announcements webpage listed here. Your student reporting instructions are mandatory requirements that must be met prior to departing for class. Shown here is the Education and Training Course Announcements website. This site is maintained by Headquarters Air Education and Training Command and is provided on your training RIP. Once CAT logged in to this site, you click the search tab to type in your new AFSC at the three skill level. In the course ID number block, here you will type in the retraining AFSC, remember, at the three skill level. This site will then populate your full course description to include student reporting instructions, security clearance, and uniform requirements. 
Again, your student reporting instructions are mandatory requirements that must be met prior to your departure for class. In this example, please note, there is an active duty service commitment of 36 months for this particular course, and all students must have an interim or final SCI eligibility security clearance. Update in the GPAS system prior to departing for this training. How often is the online MyPERS retraining advisory updated? Answer, daily. As class seats are being filled, the advisory will reflect such changes. Be sure to always refresh your browser to view the most current version. And remember, only apply for AFSCs where quotas exist, meaning if there is a zero annotated, there are no more class seats for that particular AFSC. How do I track my retraining package in MyPERS? Once you request to retrain, a retraining technician will be assigned to your application. Please allow a minimum of 20 duty days for that technician to review your record to establish eligibility for your requested AFSC. There is not a need to call the TFSC for status of your retraining application. To track your application, log on to the MyPERS website under My Account. Here you will see your request for retraining and the MyPERS reference number at all times. You are able to communicate directly with your assigned retraining technician by utilizing this open ticket. Well, that concludes today's retraining webcast and we thank you for logging in. Today we provided you information and guidance on the overall purpose of the Air Force Enlisted Retraining Program, we discussed this year's non-commissioned officer retraining program in its three phases. We covered your roles and responsibilities as the customer. We reviewed how to interpret the online MyPERS retraining advisory to include the advisory notes, along with a demonstration of how to navigate through the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory. We will now open up this forum for any additional questions you may have. Please type them in now. So we'll start with Sergeant Hernandez as a secondary AFSC of 9W, prevent me from applying. So NCORP is based off, uh, similar to assignments, is based off your control AFSC. Sergeant Allen is asking about special duties. So special duties, the eight series and reporting identifiers, the nine series, uh, we will not be selecting you for mandatory retraining. So that's during phase two portion. Uh, you can, uh, you can <laughs> apply to retrain during phase three when it's open season. And yes, you will need an exception of policy. The reason why the eight series needs an exception of policy is because you'll be asking to be released from not only your, your uh, secondary AFSC, your primary AFSC, but you'll also be asking to be released from your special duty AFSC. So your MTLs that want to retrain and leave that, um, that area early, your exceptional policy will need to go to the special duty career field manager along with your primary AFSC career field manager. So yes, eight series will need an ETP and you can volunteer to retrain during phase three. Um, Mark Gilbert asks, were all the AFSCs with an out objective listed today? Yes. That was a uh, live screenshot of the projections for all the AFSCs with the out. We are loading that now and uh, hope to have that up and ready for you all uh, by tomorrow morning, 31 July. Good question, Roman, on first-term airmen. 
I need to be very clear that if you are a first term airman, you need to look in the first term airman column on the retraining advisory. We do realize we have some staff sergeant first term airmen, we have tech sergeant first term airmen, but you need to ask yourself, are you a first term airman or not? So if you have not re-enlisted, uh, if you're still a first term airman, yes, you need to look in the FTA column on the retraining advisory. Those staff, techs, and masters that are on their second enlistment, then, then you look in the, uh, the rank column appropriate to your rank. So FTAs, this isn't your webinar. <laughs> we are having an FTA webinar on Wednesday. If you are a first-term airman, you need to look in the first-term airman column on the retraining advisory regardless of your rank. The master vulnerability lists are for those control AFSCs without objectives. Those that are currently projected for an assignment will not be mandatorily retrained. If you would like to volunteer for retraining, you may do so during phase three. Okay, I'm gonna flip over to Facebook and take a look at some of the questions there. Uh, so Riley James, those objectives outs were just an example. No, that were that was the real uh, fiscal year 19 live projections. And actually, we'll go back to that slide uh, so you all can take a look at it. Let's see. We'll go back to slide number nine. So listed here are the current uh, projections for retraining out. Remember, if you have a line number, you need to look in that particular column. For example, uh, the first AFSC listed there, the one Nancy one A shred. Uh, if I'm a staff sergeant, but I have a line number for tech sergeant, I'm going to be looking in the E6 column. Makes sense. Uh, there's a lot of FTA questions out there, guys. This is not the FTA webinar. The FTA webinar is scheduled for Wednesday. We will also have two sessions. All the eligible FTAs should have received that my purse message uh, reminding you of the webinar. <laughs> if you didn't, I'm reminding you now. The webinar is Wednesday. <laughs> Sergeant Reese, I'll, I'll repeat that again because um, it's a different start time on Wednesday. So the first term... Um, Webinars, retraining webinars are on uh, 1 August, August 1st, 8 o'clock start time central in the morning, 9 o'clock uh, Eastern time. And then we also have one on August 1st in the uh, evening, 1630 central, 1730 Eastern. So please join us on Wednesday for the first term retraining webcast. Thank you. There's more questions out there for shortfalls. Remember the shortfalls kind of geared also to the first term airmen, but yes, the shortfall listing is updated. Now remember the shortfall listing gets updated throughout the fiscal year as career field managers um, request their FSCs to either be removed or added. So always just refresh your browser on MyPERS to ensure you're looking at the current uh, shortfall listing. Uh, so Riley James, uh, there's another question uh, kind of similar to the one prior with the out objective. So remember during phase one and phase two, we need those folks that have out objectives to apply first. If your control AFSC and rank is not listed as having an out objective, then you can apply, yes, but you need to apply during phase three. And 
you must already have your exception of policy memorandum. You must submit that simultaneously. <laughs> so at the same time, phase three, guys, listen up. Phase three, there's no out objectives. You still want to apply to retrain. You can do so, but you have to do so during phase three. Phase three, we've always had a phase three. We just have not technically uh, titled it that. So there's always been a quote unquote open season. So during phase three, that's when you will apply if there's no out objectives and you will need to have that ETP at the same time that you are applying. So when you go into my purse, actually click apply, there will be a section there where you can type in remarks and there will be a tab where you can add attachments. Sometimes that tab is not there, that that button is not there initially. So save and close your application, get right back in and you'll see that tab. At that time, you need to go ahead and attach your ETP. So any uh, special circumstances, uh, medical, uh, anything that needs special ETPs, uh, yes, you can submit those. Remember, the uh, ETPs are uh, sent directly to your career field manager. Those folks that were on the master vulnerability listing did not have um, medical codes updated. So if your medical code had not been updated by uh, Friday of last week, yes, you were on the master of vulnerability listing. Can we move to um, the next slide for the out quotas? There's one more slide after this one. We're going to pause for a bit so you folks can look at the out quotas. Just a reminder again, you need to look in your current control AFSC and your current grade, unless you have a line number. If you're li you have a line number, then you look at that next column over. Okay, I'm going to switch back over to Facebook, answer some questions. Uh, Sarah, I'm not familiar with those Navy forms, but uh, so, so Sarah's question is, are there additional documents uh, in addition to the Air Force Form 422 that needs to be turned in? Uh, yes, some AFSCs need a 422 and a commander's recommendation letter. Some AFSCs like EO, what does EO need? The, just an example, EO needs the... the OPR, OPR letter from the base. Oh, okay, okay, yes, the, uh, the OPR letter from the assigned base. What's it called? The observation for the observation period. So to answer your question, yes, some AFSCs need additional documents um, other than the Air Force Form 422. Christina will write, your question is, what exactly does this do to help others? Uh, <laughs> what exactly does the retraining program do? It allows you to retrain out of your current control AFSC. <laughs> it start a new career. <laughs> it allows you to be uh, retrained on the Air Force dime in two different career fields. Builds up your resume. How about that? Uh, Sergeant Lauren ask if you have an advisory note next to your AFSC that only allows you to retrain into a shred. Does that mean you cannot retrain into another critically manned control AFSC? So the battlefield AFSCs are tricky. Uh, to answer the question, yes, you can go ahead and apply to retrain into a battlefield AFSC if you have out objectives, yes. If you're applying uh, to a battlefield AFSC, yes, you can disregard that advisory note. That's to the battlefield AFSCs only. Let me move on to the next slide. Okay. 
shown here, the last of the projected AFSCs without objectives. So uh, Sergeant Fox asked how long would the eligibility check to process, normally the eligibility check is projection. 20 duty days? That's the, that's the standard. That's the standard. And that's because we'll receive so many applications. So the sooner you get your application in, the better. Just know that uh, before we implement phase two, you'll need to have your application in no later than, what was the date? 15 September. So between 15 September and 1 October, the team will be um, uh, going through cases, doing the eligibility checks, and uh, also um, at the same time, selecting folks for phase two that do not have volunteer applications in by 15 September. 15 September is the cutoff to get your uh, application in, volunteer application. Mm -hmm. uh, Sergeant Hazelwood is asking for manning numbers for his control AFSC. Uh, so I suggest you get with your local chief or functional. Maybe you all can have a chit chat with your CFM and ask him directly. <laughs> so no, we don't keep uh, many numbers for AFSCs here. The control, uh, the uh, career field managers meet up and they let us know how many they need out uh, by rank and by date. And they let us know how many uh, class seats we have available also by rank. Sergeant Fox asks, is there a reason why Incorp came out before FTA? <laughs> Let me think of a good answer for that one. <laughs> this is a larger program, Sergeant Fox. So we want to make sure we get this word out as soon as possible to get those class seats filled. So remember, the master vulnerability listing lists everyone that's retraining promotion eligible for those AFSCs that have out objectives. Uh, so the person, I won't say your name, that asked why are there so many staffs and techs logged in versus master. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the screen there. So the screen that's up there right now, uh, just the first AFSC uh, to Romeo, you have 20 E5s needed out and 16 E6 needed out and zero E7. So that's why I would assume there's more staffs and techs logged in. Folks, let's ask some, um, some, some good hearty questions about the program. I'm gonna be skipping these uh, FTA questions because I've already said this is uh, not the FTA briefing. Remember guys, the FTA briefing is scheduled for Wednesday. Okay, this is strictly the Incorp, the second termers briefing. So we'll be answering questions for our second termers. If you are a second termer, you'll look in the staff tech master column. If you are a first termer, you will look in the first term airman column only, regardless of your rank. Just ask yourself, either you're a first term airman or you're not. First term airman has their own uh, column. I believe that sums up all the in-court questions on uh, Facebook. And we're answering questions that are typed in here at the webinar. Any more questions out there about in -court? <laughs> Not FTA. <laughs>
So the uh, master vulnerability listing was sent out for those eligible retraining, eligible promotion folks that had uh, projected outs in their AFSC. That MVL was pulled last Thursday. Uh, so maybe there were some changes to the AFSC. Um, remember there are slicks and there are shreds. So uh, the MBL was pulled off of the uh, slick AFSC and the shred by rank. So for Sergeant Hosey, the question is, will AFPC choose a job for an individual if they do not volunteer during phase one? Uh, yes, your career field manager will select you uh, depending on how many out objectives are still, um, are still, vacancies are still needed to be pulled. So yes, if you're on the vulnerable list, that means you're vulnerable for mandatory retraining during phase two. The uh, master vulnerability listing has been sent out to the field. Your FSS commander should have access to it by now and your base level assigned uh, CAAs, your career assistance advisors. Nine twenty two, folks, we're going to wrap up right at nine thirty. So, uh, so folks, um, I'm seeing some similar questions here. So let's let's go over these out objectives again. Uh, so just for example, if you look down at the very last AFSC listed there, the four Romeo. So right now, the four Romeo career field manager needs 14 E5 out to retrain out of four Romeo. They need only one tech sergeant to retrain out, zero master sergeant. So the question is, if I'm a master sergeant, I'm four R0, can I apply to retrain? Sure, you can during phase three. Remember phase one and phase two, we just need those folks without objectives out quotas listed. We need those folks to apply to retrain first. So uh, the, the next question was for 4 Nancy 1, I'm a tech sergeant. What's the chances of me being retrained out, force retrained? At this time, the career field manager for 4 Nancy 1 does not need any E6 personnel out. They need 10 E5s out. So that's how we read that chart, guys. Again, uh, for Nancy 1X1 Tech Sergeant, if you would like to retrain, you can apply. You can apply during phase three. Now remember, you need an exception of policy at the same time that you are applying. Your exception of policy needs to be endorsed by your unit commander. Remember that exception of policy is asking your career field manager, can you be released from your career field? So those ETPs, once they arrive at AFPC, endorsed by your unit commander, we send those directly to the uh, career field managers. Your career field manager makes that final determination. So when you get that CAN statement from AFPC, it says your ETP has been disapproved. Uh, remember, it wasn't at this level. Don't shoot the messenger, guys. Your CFM makes that final approval or disapproval uh, decision whether or not they're releasing you from your career field. It's 9.24, we're counting down. Any more questions? We're going to end right at 9.30. I didn't, I didn't see what his first question was. Okay. 
So, so I think the question was, um, if I'm assigned, if I'm assigned to one base but station otherwise. So all base level uh, career assistance advisors are actively engaged. We did a webinar with those guys and gals last week. They have the master vulnerability listing. Now, what I do ask of the customers is to ensure, go ahead and log on to your MyPERS profile, ensure that your um, government email address, your Outlook, Microsoft Outlook email address is correct. Those folks that are have the email at mail.mail.com.airforce, make sure that's updated correctly so you can get your MyPERS message. Also, there's an option to update your Yahoo, your Gmail for your personal email address, and I highly suggest you do that. So if you were on the master vulnerability list, again, please log on to your MyPERS or your virtual MPF and ensure uh, both email addresses, personal and official, are updated correctly. Uh, Sergeant Keegan asked for fiscal year 19, <laughs> what's the fiscal year 19 in quotas? So those will be displayed in the next uh, two days. Those are class seats that we're working on getting displayed on my purse. So check the advisory. Right now, we want you guys to focus on the out objectives. So you can go ahead and um, start determining uh, whether you want to volunteer to retrain out. Uh, so uh, there's a question on what are the phases. Um, so it's three phases. Phase one is the volunteer phase. That's the phase that begins tomorrow. Uh, you need to have your applications in by 15 September. That's phase one. Phase two is the mandatory retraining phase. If implemented, that phase will begin on or about 1 October. During phase two, folks will be assigned training class seats. So you'll get that good my purse message. Congratulations, you have been approved to retrain into boom. Okay, the last phase, phase three is what we're calling open season. That's when we're opening up the uh, retraining advisory for those folks that did not have out quotas during phase three, open season. That's an opportunity for you to apply to retrain with your ETP. Ooh, ETP, ETP. Your ETP must be endorsed by your unit commander. Those applications that submitted ETP not endorsed by unit commander will be closed. Unit commander, not flight commander, not supervisor, not first sergeant. Unit commander, guys. Two minutes. Son Wiggins is nice. He's answering these FTA questions. I already said stop asking us <laughs> FTA questions. <laughs> but yes, the rules are different. <laughs> I don't see any more out there for Facebook. Oh, then someone typed one. Let's see. Oh, Sergeant James. <laughs> Two alphas. So the fiscal year 19 to alpha memorandum is not out there. So please don't reference the fiscal year 18. Uh, memorandum. Any career field managers that have a fiscal year 18 memorandum, they're working on updating their fiscal year 19. Fiscal year 18 uh, officially closes 30 September 2018. 18, yes, 18. So for the two alphas, just like any other AFSC during phase one and phase, well, phase one, you apply to retrain if you have out objectives. You see zero out objectives. Ooh, that's a long question. You see zero. Oh, he copied and pasted the entire memorandum. Thank you, Sergeant James, for that. <laughs> During phase one, you apply to retrain if your AFSC is listed without objectives, O-U-T quotas. Don't have any out objectives. 
and you would still like to retrain, you can do so during phase three. All right, guys, thank you very much for logging in. We have another one scheduled for what time is it? Sixteen thirty uh, Central Time, seventeen thirty Eastern. Please join us again. I want to thank Master Sergeant Reese and her AFPC retraining team for hosting the webinar this morning. Thank you so much. We're going to disconnect now from AFPC. Thank you. AFPC out. <laughs> Stand by for the sound.